Hey folks, Captain Mikey here. This thing feels a little odd to me here today because I don't have the trailer behind me. What I'm doing is I'm going to take some of your advice. I've had quite a few of my subscribers suggest that I do some bank fishing videos. It's a little out of my element, a little out of my comfort zone, but when I really think about it, that's how I started too. So why shouldn't I? A lot of you guys, if this is what the way you can fish, a lot of you don't have access to boats. I forgot about that. I didn't even think about that. So I'm not teaching you as much as I possibly can if I'm always doing it from a boat. So I'm gonna try it from a bank. So what I'm doing right now is I'm driving deep into the Everglades and I'm gonna find a nice little spot and try to focus on, give you guys a couple pointers of things that might help you next time you're out there bank fishing even if it's a new area some of the tactics to use some of the techniques to use what lures to throw and you know what i'm going to learn a little something here too today too guys so go ahead stay tuned hopefully this will be a great video for you all right guys so it looks like we found a pretty decent looking area fairly fishy you'll see a bit more of that in there but let's go over a little bit of the tackle and what i'm going to bring when you're on the shore, you just can't bring everything that you want to bring. So I've I've actually brought most of uh, most of my tackle that I'll use on a regular basis out with me. But I'm only as I walk around, I'm gonna leave most of this in the truck. I'm gonna bring my my tackle bag with me. Now that's gonna have most of my terminal tackle in it, all the different hooks, all the different uh, weights, and some extra line and things like that. But it's also got uh, my crankbaits and my crankbaits and my uh, spinner baits and my jigs and stuff I usually keep in here too. Uh, of course, hook, uh, pliers, scissors, anything else that you might possibly need. I'll definitely bring that. All right, now I only brought three rods out with me. So I think I'm gonna, seeing as the area that I'm fishing here, really there's not a lot of trees from where I'm gonna be able to walk and stuff. So I got a lot of open area to be able to swing. So I'm gonna bring, I'm a bait cast guy. I'm gonna bring out this bait caster, now this is a Shimano bait caster, but it's on a seven foot two medium heavy rod. That seven foot two medium heavy rod, it's got a real fast action tip on it. So I'm gonna be able to whip any lures a lot farther. The reason I'm bringing this one is to be able to maximize the distance that I can cast, try to cover as much of the area as I can with it. So we'll definitely bring that one out. And I think that's the one I'm gonna start with. I've also brought, in case I do get into uh, an area where it's a lot less, you know, more more trees and stuff, a little less areas. Uh, this is a six and a half foot uh, bait caster, medium heavy, fast action. Again, I can get a nice cast with it out there. But uh, this one, if I'm in the tighter areas, uh, I'm gonna come back for this one here. And of course I did bring a spinning outfit. This is, I don't normally have, I don't have too many two-piece rods like this. It definitely helps when you're traveling and you're on foot uh, out there, especially, you know, uh, you just need, you don't have areas to store all these seven-foot rods half the time with you. So I did bring this one. It's a Fluger. Fluger President is, I love this rod. Actually, I catch a lot off of it. But I brought it for convenience because it's two-piece. And if I get into an area where I need to finesse a little bit more, I'll come back with, uh, come back to get the spinning rod here. And I'm gonna bring uh, just a bag of assorted soft plastics here. I don't know if you can see all that or whatever. I've got everything from Senkos to regular worms, uh, all different styles of worms, a bunch of flukes, uh, creature baits, uh, other other style uh, shad imitating pl soft plastics. Um, Nothing top water here, and of course, always my gambler big easies. Gotta love those. But I'm gonna try to cast a whole bunch of different things out here for you guys today. All right, and to start, guys, here in this nice little area, I'm gonna start off. And what I'd recommend when you're shore fishing, guys, and you really don't know what to what to do first or anything, a nice search lure is always Texas rig. Tie yourself an extra wide gap hook on there, uh, you know, four alt something like that and put a, a nice bullet sinker on top of it okay so put a bullet sinker on you don't need to go too heavy no more than a you know quarter ounce probably the heaviest effort to start with or whatever just let that slide take an extra wide gap hook tie it on there nice and nicely and now you have a variety of options whether you're going to fish a worm a creature bait like this uh, a swim bait or a fluke or whatever any kind of soft plastic can be rigged weedlessly 
and you're gonna have that that distance so this will give you a lot of options to cover a bunch of different grounds to figure out exactly what it is you're gonna want to want to fish now I got a creature bait on here so what I'm gonna do guys is I'm actually gonna cast it out I'm gonna try to find some of that cover and I'm gonna slowly not just drag it across the bottom let it sink down there and I'm gonna slowly kind of kind of work it back it's not a swim it's not a drag it's just kind of hopping off the bottom the whole time so one of the things when you're fishing from a bank one thing you might want to consider is is the placement of your of your lures all right now you want to you always want to make things look as natural as possible all right now if i just physically and i'm going to do it just to show you i cast straight out in the middle of this canal here and I work this lure back, chances of me getting something's gonna be minimal. Most of those bait fish or whatever else those bass are targeting aren't gonna be swimming from the middle to the shore. That's just the way it is. So, but you do have an advantage while you're bank fishing here is you wanna try to optimize your cast and optimize your areas by casting along the shorelines. If you cast along those shorelines, you can see, you know, as you're going along, that's where the fish are. The fish are closer up to the bank, but they travel along the shorelines. They don't actually go from the depth and in and depth and in and things like that. They're going to be cruising along that shoreline or sitting tight up in the cover, which is close to the shoreline. All right, so it, when I have my boat, it's a lot harder. I have to get close to that bank to be able to cast up and down it or whatever. I'm going out from the middle and casting towards targets. So you do have a bit of an advantage uh, casting from the shoreline here. There we go. There we go, guys. All right. Well, look at that. Beautiful butterfly peacock bass. Now he's got a mouthful of my lure here. Lots of treble hooks. So I think I'm just going to have to use my pliers on this one. Gorgeous, gorgeous fish. Hey, 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 hey. So down, girlfriend. These are incredibly, incredibly strong fish. I don't want to get a treble hook in my hand. She inhaled that lure. There we go. Oh, oh. She got away. That's too bad. Hey, girlfriend. Calm down, calm down, calm down. Well guys, let's walk her down to the water. There's a beautiful butterfly peacock bass. This one's a little dirty now. Only about a pound and a half. But these are incredibly, incredibly strong fish. And they, they were introduced here in the canals around Miami and South Florida in the early 80s, originally from South America. But they've just thrived here. They've done a fantastic job. So we get cleaned up, cleaned up for a big picture here. Just fantastic. Look at those markings. Beautiful fish. Gotta love it. All right, girlfriend, we'll let you go. That was a lot of fun. Those peacock bass are just 
so incredibly strong. As you can see guys, I switched up a little bit. And that's it with shore fishing. You just got to try everything. Don't be afraid. I've gone to uh, a lipless crankbait here. Because it is deeper, I got a bunch of current. So I'm just trying to cover it. And you can really cast these things a mile. Oh yeah, oh yeah, much better fit. Oh, she's off. Oh, there it is. Oh. Woo! There we go, guys. This. Oh, she's gone again. That was at least a four pound. Ay, ay, ay. Well, can't win them all. That's too bad. That would have been nice to put hold that one up. Oh yeah! Ugh. All right, guys, this is what I'm talking about. This is the one I had earlier, and I lost him. Jesus Christ, he's huge. Oh yeah. Oh, come here, come here, come here. Cut my fingers. It's a big girl. There we go. Look at that, ladies and gentlemen. Beautiful, beautiful butterfly peacock bass. Can't get much nicer than that. Red right in around that three and a half, four pound mark. Starting to get that beautiful bump on her head right here. It's a big male. And he loved that swim bait. Look at that thing. What a gorgeous, gorgeous fish. They are so strong. Jesus. Trying not to do this. Come on. Here we go. What a beautiful fish. Can you, can you, have you ever seen something so beautiful? Guys, you got to come down here to South Florida. Check this out. What an unbelievable fishery we got here. There's nothing but beautiful fish out here. I'm targeting largemouth bass, but here it is, a gorgeous peacock bass. You can catch fish from the shore, folks. You don't need to worry about having a boat, whether you have it or not. The same principles apply. Just check out the same areas, bass of any kind, light cover. Look for that cover. Try to target it. Got Figure out what you're dealing with. You got currents. Try to move something that move, makes a little more noise, moves a little faster. Just work it out just the same way. What a thing of beauty. Gotta love it, guys. Gotta love it. So that's it, folks. I hope you learned a little bit of something out here today. You don't need to do a lot. You don't need a big, fancy, expensive boat. Just find the same areas. Find areas that you, you can access. If you can only get maybe one cast in that area, don't bother with it. It's just a waste of time. You're going to end up upsetting yourself. Find the little areas where you got plenty of room to make lots of casts. Try a variety of lures until you figure out what they're on. And have fun with it, guys. That's it. All right, folks, I hope you enjoyed that. We'll do a sign out in a few minutes. What a fish. 
Well, guys, I hope you learned a little something. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, as always, keep up those subscriptions. Keep up those comments, guys. Hopefully, I can make more and more of these videos for you guys. I really, really enjoy doing this. And I, I love to fish, but I love to teach it. So, guys, if any of these methods work for you, if you've had some success with any of the stuff I taught you, let me know. That way I know I'm doing, the, doing it right out here. But let me know at any given time, guys. And let me know what it is that you want to see next. I'll do my best to make it for you guys. Well, folks, Captain Mikey, one last time, signing out. The future is bright. You keep those lines tight.